Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away. And I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven if you do not forgive them. They are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. My Lord and my God. Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me? In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, you may have life. After this, Jesus appeared once more to his disciples at Lake Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, the one from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing! Throw your net out on the right side of the boat, and you will catch some. So they threw the net out, could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred yards away. When they stepped ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, 153 in all. Even though there were so many, still the net did not tear. Come and eat. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This, then, was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from death. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do?
Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, You know everything. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, Follow me. Peter turned round and saw behind him that other disciple whom Jesus loved, the one who had leaned close to Jesus at the meal and had asked, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about this man? If I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So a report spread among the followers of Jesus that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say he would not die. He said, if I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? He is the disciple who spoke of these things, the one who also wrote them down. And we know that what he said is true. Now there are many other things that Jesus did. If they were all written down one by one, I suppose that the whole world could not hold the books that would be written.